everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome back to 12 Games of Christmas, a series of videos that we do each year where we talk about games that we recommend you buy for people. If you're looking for a gift guide of sorts, we're doing it earlier this year because, hey, there's a lot of shipping things going on in the world, so hopefully this gives you some ideas of some great games. Uh, this series of videos is sponsored by the World Series of Board Gaming, which is happening uh, in September, October in 2022, where you can go there and compete in 16 different events to go on and become the champion of the world with a $25,000 prize handed to you by their special guest, Stephen Bonacore, who will be giving out the World Series of Board Gaming rings to each of the ring event winners. So if you've ever wanted to meet him, and since this is Christmas season, I would say that it's probably a good idea to do so. You can go there, but then, of course, you want to win. But he'll be there, and like I said, lots of other things are going around at the same event. So you'll be able to do some open gaming, too, in between all of these different events. More stuff in the description of this video below. Check out the link there. All right, well, let's talk about today's things. This is not. This is the very opposite now of championships. We're talking about cooperative games. Sometimes after playing this game where you're like killing the other person, you want to get along with them. You want to work together. So these are 12 picks that we have for cooperative games, and here we go. All right, so let's kick off the cooperative games list with a gorgeous open world sandbox of a game called Sleeping Gods. Sleeping Gods comes from Red Raven Games and designer and artist Ryan Lockett, who has created a number of games that incorporate storytelling. Sleeping Gods also incorporates storytelling to a large amount, but it's a very open world adventure where you are sailing around on a ship and your game board is a spiral bound book. And you can go off the edge of the world on one end and find out where you go islands to explore, monsters to encounter and defeat, difficulties that you're going to be facing at every twist and turn. If you have a somebody you're trying to buy a gift for that is a fan of Zelda, especially Breath of the Wild, and they also love board games, this is a fantastic melding of the two. I've never played a board game that felt more like Zelda Breath of the, Breath of the Wild, and in my eyes, that's a huge recommendation for it. Looks gorgeous plays very, very smoothly, although there's quite a bit of a challenge there. You're working together as a different, as crew of a ship. Really, really special game, I feel. That is Sleeping Gods. Next up for cooperative games is Just One, which is in the rare category of cooperative party games. This is a cooperative word game that plays up to seven players. In the game, people take turns being the guesser, and when you're the guesser, everyone else is giving a one-word clue for you to guess your word. But if two people give the same one-word clue, then those cancel out and you don't get to see those words. So people are trying to give clues that are kind of vague because they don't want anyone else giving the same clue, but also point you to the word because if you only get one clue, you need to still be able to figure out the word. So it can be very hilarious having all the words cancel out and people just getting one clue or no clues. Um, and it's also very fun trying to connect these words together when they're kind of like vague clues to the words. So if you like word games and cooperative games and have a big group of people, then just one is great. Next up, let's talk about Atlantis Rising. This is a gorgeous game in which all the players, of course, are working together, and you are trying to keep the city, the island of Atlantis, from sinking into the ocean. You are going to be gathering components, uh, trying to build this sci-fi sci machinery to transport everyone on the city to a faraway place before it all sinks down. There's a lot of cooperation. There's a lot of helping each other out, a lot of planning, and then some dice rolling to see how well you do at all the things you are attempting to do. It is a very immersive game, very conversational game as you plan your turns and then take actions going around the table just sort of seeing if you manage to do what you are attempting to do. Very much a, a game where the tension builds and builds and builds. One of those games where at first you feel there's no way we can win this and then you might just be able to pull it off. So Atlantis Rising, second edition, 
beautiful game, definitely recommend it. For this list, I am recommending Arkham Horror the Card Game. This is a game that you could play with up to three other players. You are playing these cards from your hand with this deck that you've constructed, and you could gain experience points as you go along. It is totally story-driven, and what you do matters in the game. So you're helping each other out by playing cards and helping each other, like, defeat monsters or gain clues and everything in order to ultimately defeat like the cultists who keep on trying to summon the ancient ones. What the heck? Anyway, that is the game that I pick for this list, Arkham Horror, the card game. Next up is Marvel Champions. This is a great superhero themed cooperative game based off the Marvel IP where you all have different decks of cards that is your hero and you're going to be facing off against different villains. This game works great for like two or three players as you're like smashing out trying to take out the villain for the game. You have a hand of cards, and you're trying to determine with with cards by discarding certain ones to play out other ones to build up your tableau and the whole time there's threat coming out for the villain trying to do his different schemes and then you're trying to attack him to take him down. A lot of fun and a great cooperative game that is Marvel Champions. Next up on the list of cooperative games that we suggest is Horrified. We've been playing this game a ton this past year. Uh, it is the perfect mix of spooky but not scary. It's using the Universal Studios monsters and it's a full cooperative game where we're working together to try to take down all these different bad guys. One of the things that's really awesome about this game is how you can really level it to how difficult you want to be. So when we play together, we play it super difficult, but when we introduce it to new people, we can play like you're definitely going to win this game and create an extreme extremely fun and enjoyable experience when introducing this game. So that is great. Each one of these bad guys or these monsters has a different kind of win condition that you need to do to complete you know, this particular monster. They're all varied. They all add a ton of variety and fun to this game. A lot of people consider this a board game essential and I think I would agree. Next up we have Master Word, which is a cooperative word-based deduction game. One person is going to be playing the role of the guide and everybody else in the game are playing the role of seekers. And you have uh, dry erase cards that you're going to be utilizing in this game and dry erase pens, of course, as well. The guide is going to have a particular word that they're trying to get the seekers to guess. And all the seekers are going to have to begin with is some very basic clue. So let's say, for example, that the guide uh, had the card that said, animal at the top is that kind of main clue and then underneath it gave them that specific animal let's say dog for example the guide is going to try to get the seekers to guess the word dog and all the seekers are going to have to begin with is the word animal they're going to write words potential clues that they're going to lay out in a row so let's say one person says okay all we know is that it's an animal i'm going to put furry the other person might put scaly to try to narrow things down once everyone has laid out their potential clues, then the guide is going to have these little thumbs up tokens that they're going to put at the end of the row. So let's say that there are three or four cards out there and the only one that would fit potentially would be furry. So they put one thumb at the end of that row. Now, the seekers don't know which word in that row is correct. They only know that one of those words is correct. So they're going to continue to do this through seven rounds and they only get three potential guesses at the master word. Again, they're all working together, including the guide. They can't give them any hints other than what they had at the beginning and those little thumbs up, but they're all working together to try to guess this word. A very unique feeling cooperative game. If you like word games and you want to work in a cooperative manner, Master Word's a really good one to check out. Another game I recommend for this list is Marvel United. You each have your own deck with a certain hero that you're playing. You can play as Hulk or Spider-Man or... Iron Man or whomever, right? It's really cool. And you go up against a certain scenario and what's really awesome is each deck is very flavored. So uh, if I'm playing as Iron Man, maybe I'm really good at like um, helping out civilians and things, but maybe I'm playing as the Hulk where I'm just smashing things and, you know, killing um, minions and stuff. So that is where the cooperative nature really comes in. You need both players or as many players as you want, it goes up to four, um, to defeat the scenario because you each specialize in different things and you need to help each other to ultimately beat the big baddie, the villain, Red Skull or something, Taskmaster, I don't know. Uh, anyway, that is my other pick for this list, Marvel United.
A cooperative game that we recommend is Chronicles of Crime. This is a game where you're all working together to solve a crime. There's thought? a bunch of them in the box. But what makes this game unique is that each location and each person that you come across all have a QR code. So you need a companion app for this, but you'll scan those different locations or the people as you're going through and trying to solve the case. You'll get tidbits of information. You can have conversation with some of the suspects or that. witnesses. And the game actually keeps track of how much time it takes to move from location to location or to talk to people. So convenient. And that is how, like, your final score comes out. How much yeah. time did you take on the case and all that. Mm -hmm. I don't actually love cooperative games, but I love this one. And part of it is the, the use of the technology. You can use it, either use VR to be very immersive and look around at this crime scene, or you can use your phone to just kind of hold it up and move around, and you can catch little details in the room of crime. A lot of times stuff. you'll be searching around with the phone, and you'll find different things. Like you'll find so some cool. piece of evidence, and once you find that, then you'll get like the corresponding card that goes right. along with it. Very clever. Can you figure out the crime and solve it in can time? Can you? Well, you'll have to get the game and find out. Next up is The Crew. Now this is a great cooperative trick-taking game. Instead of working with maybe one partner or being all in for yourself, you're working together to meet certain objectives. So maybe someone needs to get all the fours, maybe someone needs to get multiple blue cards, whatever it may be. This game is great because it solves the cooperative alpha player problem, which basically means that in cooperative games, sometimes someone takes over and they do a lot of the planning and kind of telling people what to do. In this game, there's none of that. So if you have someone who loves cooperative games, but they struggle um, maybe doing that, or they don't like it when other people do that, this is a great game for that. Also, it scales. So if you play trick-taking games and you really know how to control the cards and work with that, this has some really advanced games. But also, it starts simple and it teaches some basic skills. So if you've never played a trick-taking game before, it's right at your level. So this game is great. Love it. Fabulous co-op game to pick. So the next game on the list is Spirit Island. I think what I've always liked about Spirit Island is that there's so much going on, particularly in a high player count oh, game. Yeah. Makes it very difficult for one player to dominate. You really have to understand your patch and your combination of cards. And not all cooperative games are like that. Um, and, you know, the theme itself, I love the theme. We are actually spirits trying to get rid of human. Um, and that's basically why we like Spirit Islands. Yeah, and I think the uh, the card play and the way that you can make combos out of the cards is something that you don't see in a lot of um, a lot of other co-ops, and but it also doesn't have the randomness that a fully deck building co-op might have. Absolutely. Our final game today is a spooky game called the Night Cage. The Night Cage. Each player is trapped in the darkness alone. Why are you there? I don't know, but there's like monsters coming after you. You need to crawl out. All you have is a candle in this game. And you're moving along through the darkness and you turn over tiles that are corridors that you're moving around. Every once in a while you move into a monster and you need to run. But the thing is, the tiles behind you disappear into the darkness. You can't even find your way back. This game really gives some really creepy vibes, but you're all working together because each one of you needs to find a key and then you all will turn your keys at the same time in one of the few doors and exits to get out of this thing. It's really well done. I mean, I know that we are out of the ho uh, Halloween season now and into the holiday season, but if you want a spooky October, you know, horror-themed game, but also want to work together with everyone else to escape the horror, then I think the Night Cage will really do it for you. The Night Cage, as well as many of the other games we talked about, are available online. We tried to pick games that hopefully you can buy or are coming out soon towards you. you can, we tried to look on the internet to see the availability of these. We checked, our, especially our sponsor, GameNerds.com. They have a great selection of games, and we recommend that you go check them out. So check them out. Also check out the Board Game Champions uh, link below so you can win the championships there and get that $25,000. But until next time, I hope that you enjoy this list and it's helped you out. I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching 12 Games at Christmas on the Dice Tower. <laughs>